Today we are going to talk about relational properties. It's a data type in Adalo that links two different collections, and sometimes the same, together and creates a connection between them. Today we're talking about our one-to-many relationship and our many-to-one relationship. Why do we use these properties? Fortunately, relational properties help us with data validation because it restricts what's possible within a certain collection and that property. It helps us keep clean and organized data, which is really important when we're thinking about the performance of our app and the ease with which we build our app. First, before we dig into our relationships, let's look at the app example we have today. This is from our feature templates. It is our social media feature template. If you would like to follow along in your own app, please go and select the social media post feature template and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. Inside this template, we have three different collections, our users collection, our post collection, and the post comments collection. Because inside of our app, users are able to create posts and then they are able to reply to post with comments. All right, let's dig into one-to-many and many-to-one relationships. It may seem confusing on why you would select one over the other, but ultimately, the reason you select one is because of the collection that you are coming from and the collection you are connecting to. So actually, when you're creating these relationships, it just depends on where you're starting from. Let's look at an example. Here in our post collection, we have a relationship to our post comments. And in our post comments collection, we have a relationship with our post. When you create a relational property, You come here, add relationship, and we're gonna create a relationship to our post. This screen comes up every time that you create a relationship. It is very helpful to read through this nice and slowly and make sure that you understand what you are creating. Right now, this example is saying that a post can have multiple post comments, but only one post comment belongs to a single post post. That sounds like exactly what we want here. Let's say we try to make that relationship happen from the post side. We add a property, we select our relationship, and we want our post to have a relationship with the post comments. And we can see that a post comment can only have one post and a post can have multiple post comments. This is now the second option in this list, whereas when we were coming from our post comments collection, it was the first option. Ultimately, these two things mean the very same thing. It just, again, depends on which collection you're coming from. I'm gonna delete these properties just for the ease of talking about this in the future but we've already created these relationships in our collection. They're right here and right here. You can see how they're going to talk to each other. A common question we get is how can you tell which relationship property is selected? Inside of a property, there are several different ways to tell. One is the icon that is represented here. You can see here that this is a double icon, which means many. And in this collection, you can see it's a single icon, meaning one. Additionally, if you click inside of a property, you can see that many post comments belong to one post. Also, you can hover over the tooltip and see a diagram of what this is explaining. Again, one post inside the square belongs to many post comments inside the circle. Another interesting thing about our relationships is how it's going to appear within the database and the records that you're editing or creating. Here, you can see that this post comment was made by a user, David Smith, and here is the post that it belongs to. 
When you're editing the data on the one side of the relationship, as in many to one, that one side, it appears as a drop down. As you can see here, this drop down appears and any of this information is selectable. If you are on the many side of this relationship, here you can see that post comments, again, this is the many side of the relationship, it appears as these little chips. And it is not possible to edit this data on this side and instead needs to be edited from the quote unquote one side. This is really helpful when you're thinking about where can you edit the data and how can you make changes to your records? One to many relationships are unique in that they have a certain side of the relationship that can be edited while the other side just intercepts the data, the many side in this case. It's also possible to have a relationship to the same collection, in which case we recommend properly naming those properties. For example, in our users collection, you can see there are several properties that are self-referential. Is followed by is actually the users collection having a relationship with the users collection because a user can be followed by other users. Similarly, there is another property is following down here, and that is again, that a user is following another user. We changed the name of these properties because when they are first created, this would say user, and this would say user. And that's not helpful to actually know when we're going to work with our data from the database inside of our app. Another reason it's important to name your properties appropriately is because there may be several relationships between one collection and another. In this case, there are one, two, three, different properties that relate the user's collection with the post collection. Here you can see post published is one side of the relationship that is post owner. So instead of this saying user and post in the user's collection, we changed it to post owner and published post. That makes it much more clear what we're talking about. Similarly, there's liked users and post liked. And again, if this just said post and users, it would be very confusing about what we actually mean in our database. So please name your properties. When there are relational properties that connect one collection to another collection, you'll begin to notice as you build out your app that that information shows up in other areas. So for example, in this part of my app, I would like to show the number of users that like a post and how many comments are on this post. Here we can see that our current post has post comments and account. If post comments and posts were not connected in any way, this option wouldn't even appear because our database wouldn't know how these two things are connected. One tiny limitation of Adalo is that sometimes you may notice that you would like to have a one-to-one -one relationship. In other databases, this is possible. However, in Adalo, you can bypass a one-to-one -one relationship and select a one-to-many and you just ignore the many side. And then it will function the same as what you would expect in a one-to-one -one relationship. Another example of where the one-to-many relationship can be viewed is inside this post button, for example. If you remember before, we had mentioned that in a particular post comment, it can only belong to one user. 
So when we come down here to create our post comment in the database, we can see that we get the option to only select one user. Additionally, a post comment can only belong to one post. So we get the option to select one post. All right. That is all I had to cover today about one-to-many and many-to-one relationships. Hopefully this cleared up some information around how to figure out which type of relationship to choose, how to know which relationship was chosen in the past, and where to edit that data inside the database and why it's important to have relationships as well. In the future, we'll be talking about many-to-many -many relationships and kind of putting these all together to create a really solid database and foundation for your no-code app. Thank you.